Hi, this is Sesh Menengopal. Welcome to another lesson in data structures and algorithms. In this lesson, you will learn how to implement a heap in Java. In this first part, we will review how to insert and delete items in a heap, including the process of sift up for insert and sift down for delete. Following this, we will see how to store the items of a heap in an appropriate data structure. In the second part, we will finish up the implementation by coding a heap class. Let's begin with a quick review of insert. Here's an example of a heap in which we are going to insert the item 12. This requires that a new node be added to the end of the heap after the rightmost node at the last level, which is 2. This makes 12 the left child of 9. After 12 is inserted, we start sifting it up the heap. We compare 12 with its parent 9, and since 12 is greater, it switches places with 9. In the next step, a level higher, 12 is compared with 10, found to be greater, and swapped with 10. At the next level up, 12 is compared with 15, and found to be not greater, which brings the sift up process to a stop. This is another example where we'll insert the item 22 into the heap. As before, 22 must go to the end of the heap. But since all positions in the last level are occupied by nodes, a new node must be created at the next level and added at the leftmost spot, which makes 22 end up as the left child of 8. We start sifting up 22. It is compared with its parent 8, and because it is greater, they swap places. Up a level, 22 is again greater than its parent 10, so once again a switch is done. And finally, at the next level up, 22 is switched with 15. This brings 22 to the top of the heap and the sift up process comes to an end. Now let's turn our attention to deleting an item from the heap. By definition, deletion removes the highest priority item which is at the top of the heap. When this item is removed, another item, specifically the one with the next highest priority, must replace it at the top. In general, this would change the relative ordering of priorities or values of some of the items in the heap, so steps must be taken to ensure that the correct heap ordering is restored. When the deletion process starts, the first thing to do is to save the item at the top so that it can be returned to the caller when the process is complete. When an item is deleted, the heap should have one fewer node. Since the nodes are filled from top to bottom and left to right, deletion should reverse this by taking away the rightmost node at the last level, which in this case happens to be 7. While the node must go, the item itself must stay in the heap, and the obvious place to which it can be sent is the top, overriding the item 15, which is to be deleted. At the top of the heap, 7 is not greater than its children, 12 and 9, so it needs to move down. This downward movement from the top is called sift down, and must continue until 7 comes to rest at a node where it is not less than its children, or it hits bottom. Starting the sift down process, the largest of the values 7, 12, and 9 must occupy the top. To find the largest, the children are first compared. 12 is greater, so it is then compared with 7. Since it's greater, they switch places, and the sifting down of 7 continues one level below. Here, between the children 10 and 8, 10 is greater, and it is also greater than 7 itself, so they trade places. Finally, the children 4 and 2 are compared, and the greater child 4 is compared with 7. But since 4 is not greater, there is no change in 7's position, and the sift down process comes to an end. Let's review sift down on another example. The highest priority item 18 at the top of the heap is to be deleted. It is set aside to be returned at the end, and its place is taken by 3, which is in the last node of the heap. This node is then removed from the heap. 3 starts sifting down from the top. 15, the greater of its children, is also greater than 3, so they are swapped. Continuing one level down, 8, the greater of the children, is greater than 3 as well, so once again a switch takes place. Finally, of the children 7 and 4, 7 is greater, and is also greater than 3, which leads to another swap. 3 now hits bottom, and the sift down process stops. Okay, now that we have a pretty good understanding of sift up and sift down, let's move on to the next phase of the implementation, 
starting with the issue of what kind of data structure to use to store the heap items. The obvious way to store the items in a heap is to use a binary tree data structure. However, it so happens that you can actually store the items in an array, like this. You go through the heap, top to bottom, level by level, and in each level you go left to right, adding each item to the end of the array. This is called level order traversal of the binary tree. Of course, there is no tree structure really, it's only a conceptual map for us to work out the algorithms. The actual implementation deals solely with the array. This is a nice trick that does away with the overhead that comes with implementing a linked tree structure with pointers. So you're probably saying, this is all well and good, but how do you find the parent of an item for sift up or the children for sift down in a flattened array structure? Let's find out. The top of the heap 15 is at index 0 in the array. Its children are at indices 1 and 2. Its right child 9, which is at index 2 in the array, has children at indices 5 and 6. And the item 8, which is the left child of 10 in the heap, and at index 3 in the array, has children at indices 7 and 8. There is a pattern here. If an item is at index k, can you come up with a formula for where its children are? Think about this for a moment and try to work out an answer before you continue. Okay, I think you figured it out. If a node is in index k, its children are at indices 2k plus 1 and 2k plus 2. You can verify this formula against some of the other items in the array as well. Observe that for the leaf nodes in the heap, such as 6, which is at index 5 in the array, 2k plus 1, which is 11, is outside the bounds of the array, meaning that 6 does not have a child. OK, let's flip this and see how to find the index of the parent of any item in the array. Now, we know that if p is a parent, then 2p plus 1 is its left child. Let's set the index of this child to k, which means 2p plus 1 is k, or p, the parent, is k minus 1 divided by 2. Let's verify this formula on some items in the array. Consider the item 10 at index 1. Plugging in 1 for k gives 1 minus 1, which is 0. Index 0 has the item 15, which is indeed the parent of 10. The same formula should also work with the other child of 15, 9, which is at index 2. Again, plugging in 2 for k gives us 2 minus 1, which is 1, divided by 2, which is 0.5. Truncating down to an integer gives us 0, which is correct. So keep in mind that the division is an integer division. You may want to double check against our other two examples as well to find the parent of 6 and 3, which is 9, and the parent of 4 and 2, which is 8. Finally, note that the top of the heap 15 is the only item which will not have a parent. If you plug in 0 for k in the formula, it gives negative 1, divided by 2, or negative 0.5. Truncating this by throwing out the fractional part gives us 0, which would imply that the parent of 15 is 15 itself. But of course, this does not make sense. So as an exception, if k is 0, we do not compute the parent index because we know the item is at the top of the heap. OK, we are ready to move on to the next phase of the implementation, which is covered in part 2. See you then.